I'm Craig Roland from Sandflat Security. Today, in another Linux command line forensics video, I'm going to be talking about process environment variables. Now, process environment variable is very similar to the environment variables you use in your shell when you log in, but these are variables that remain attached to the process when it's running. Why is that important? Well, it's important for a very particular reason. One of the things I tell people is if you're investigating a suspicious process, the first thing you should not do is just kill nine the thing. You should uh, leave it alone and wait and take a look. And today is going to be a perfect example why. Because when that process starts, the environment variables it started with stay attached to that. And that's going to be really important as you're about to find out. So the first thing we do on our system over here, I'm logged into my victim host. Please keep in mind the IP addresses you see today, these are all cloud machines. They're going to be completely gone by the time you see this video, so please leave them alone. They have nothing to do with me or my company here. So we're logged on the box. I'm going to execute a series of commands that you might find similar to what a piece of malware might do, but we made them benign for today's purposes. First, I set history file equals zero. This is classic anti-forensics. It's saying basically don't store any history commands. I am then exporting my path and making it the current directory here so it runs everything in my path first without leaving anything that would look odd when you're doing a process listing. For today's purposes, we're gonna copy netcat over to something called X and we are gonna run netcat under the new name X and just have it listen on port 4444 and basically do nothing. Again, just a benign command for testing purposes is what we do. So we ran that command, we then exited and we closed our connection so essentially our attack is now done for the sake of today's example. Now what we've done is we're now on the victim host and one of the first things I always recommend you do when you log on to a host is just take a quick look around at the process table, make sure everything kind of looks legit. I'm just taking a quick look here and I do see something odd, uh, this command down here. And the next thing I recommend you do is to always look at what's running on a listening network port. And again, we have here 53, that's a resolver, 22 is a shell, 4444 is on a listening port with again, a process name called X. I, I say at this point, I'm gonna wanna look at this process ID here, 14636. So we're gonna copy that. Everything else here looks legit. This is uh, my connection where I'm coming in from. Now, a lot of people don't realize, but when you start a process on Linux, all the environment variables in your shell get attached to that process when it runs, plus some other ones that you don't normally see. And the way you access it is really simple. I prefer using the strings command because it tends to um, not show you the nulls and other stuff that are in the data, but you could do it with cat. It's just a little bit harder to read. So we're gonna do strings, proc, the process ID, which is 14636, and environ, okay? Oops, environ, just like that. Now, what you're going to see here is the environment variables that process started with. Now, the process is still running, so these are gonna remain there. It's gonna show me the shell it started with, that's fine. I see here, his size equals zero. This is classic anti-forensics. If I saw that on a process, I'd wanna take a look at who or why I was doing that. Uh, going down here, I see some other things here related to the shell, LS colors, but now, here's something interesting. Did you know Many Linux versions will attach the SSH connection that started that process, even though the SSH connection has actually ended. Now, from an investigator point of view, this is a really important piece of information. This is why I tell you don't kill a process that looks suspicious until you've dug into it a bit. If we were to kill this process, we would lose this information. But it's very much telling me right here. It's saying this is the host and this port number here, and it connected to this host on this port number, and it started this process. Even if a... a uh, an attacker went through with their super slick log cleaner and they purged that IP address away from all your logs, chances are it's still attached to the process in some way. Going down here again, it's saying one more time, hey, this is the SSH client that started this process. So it's just handing you this information and saying, here, this is the IP address of the attacker. Go forth and see whether or not this IP address is showing up in other places where it shouldn't be. So that is a quick rundown of the process environment variables on Linux. I urge you to go ahead and give it a try in your own Linux systems. Just dig around on all the processes that are running. It'll be interesting what you'll see dumped there. Again, it'll be different than my system. It might be pretty similar. This is an Ubuntu box. Um, different systems have different things they may or may not show you, and you'll be surprised at some of the information that digs up. Now, of course, because I'm Sandfly and we produce an agentless Linux security bot, we automatically hunt for this type of stuff 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So I'm gonna give you a quick demo of exactly what you would see if you were running our product on your system. 
So over here, we, again, we have our IP address of this system's cloud box. And Sandfly detected five alerts on this system during one of its normal patrols. And this system here, we see a few things. Well, first it's saying, hey, look, there's a process anti-forensics in place. Well, what is it? The process name X, with this process ID, has an environment variable indicating anti-forensics may be in use. Well, let's see what it's doing. Well, I'm looking at the whole thing. The binary is still present. Here's the command line. It's showing me the whole process environment. So instead of having to collect all that information yourself, it's going to be right here, again, handed right to you so you can see what's going on. It's going to show me the file descriptors that are open. It's going to see, we can see all these different things that are here. Um, network ports that are open as well. You're going to be able to see what network ports is listening. You're even going to be able to see the hashes of that particular binary so you can run it through your whatever malware uh, detection process you, you want to do. Other things are going to show up. Okay, there's a process running from a root directory. Okay, there's a process running application root X, which is a suspicious location. I agree that is a suspicious location. Uh, there's a process running with a single character. Very classic sign that something's wrong. Processes usually do not try to hide their names. Anything calling itself one weird name like this, you'd want to look into. Again, a suspicious name was seen. And again, a suspicious network port. In this case here, the process X is listed on a network port. Locations commonly used with backdoors and malware. In this system here, I know from experience that anything listening on port 4444, it's this common metasploit port, common backdoor type port. We'll flag that as well so you can take a look at it. So I'm Craig Roller from Sandfly Security. I hope you got that information there and I hope it was useful to you about using the process environment variables to dig into who or what might have started a process on a host, even if that connection is no longer valid. And I hope you also enjoyed the brief demo of our agentless security product that does a lot of this hunting for you. So I'm Craig Roller. Thanks again for watching and please subscribe to my YouTube channel or check me out on Twitter at Craig H. Roland where we'll do more and more Linux forensics videos as well. Thanks for watching. Bye.